Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how to write a device tree driver for SPI devices. And th therefore I will use this at Mega Microcontroller as a device under test and I have connected it to my Raspberry Pi over the SPI pins here. And I am using this at Mega Microcontroller as an SPI ADC. So here I have connected a variable resistor to an ADC pin of a microcontroller and over SPI I can read out the current value of the sensor over SPI. So let me show you how it works. Therefore I will use Python and I will import SPI dev to access the SPI bus from user space. First thing I need is I have to open up an instance to the device bus, uh, SPI bus and I will use SPI0, chip select 0 here. Then I will use the max speed hertz value to set the maximum SPI speed and I will set it to 4 kilohertz. In the next step I have to set the device to power up mode, therefore I will write 22 hexadecimal out and then I will write the 1 out. And you can see by doing this the LED turns on here, so now the device is up and ready and I can read from it. So let me import sleep and let's do a while one loop. So to get the current value all I have to do is I have to write out 55 and then do another SPI transaction and in this transaction I will get the value back of the value of the ADC bag and then I will just sleep for half a second. Okay, so this is the current value of the ADC and now if I'm adjusting the resistor with my screwdriver you can see the value is changing. Okay, great. And now let's set the device to power down mode again, therefore I would just have to write 22 and then a 0 out and the LED turns off. Ok, great, so now I will write a Linux driver for this simple at Mega SPI ADC. Ok, so let me cd into my Linux driver tutorials folder. Here you can see all the modules I have already built. And as a template for this video, I will use this device tree industrial IO um, module here. So let me copy it. And I will create a new folder I will call 26 device tree SPI. And let me cd into this directory. And let's check what's inside here. So this dtio.c is the source code for our module or our driver. Then we have a device tree overlay and we have a make file to build the driver and the device tree overlay. And here in this folder I will put the firmware for my microcontroller, so you can have it too. Okay, first thing I will do is I will rename the source file to dtspi.c and I will change this in the make file as well. Okay. And then let's take a look at the device tree overlay. So this is the device tree overlay for adding a new I2C device, but now I want to add an SPI device. To do this I will need two fragments. So the fragment 0 has the target SPI device 0 and I will create an overlay here and I will set the status to disabled. So what this overlay does is it disables the SPI device um, SPI0 chip select 0 so we can use it then for our for adding our device. So here we are adding another fragment, this time our target is SPI0. Then let's set the status to OK here. These are just some address information. Down here we are adding our new SPI device and I will call it MyADC. 
and it's at chip select zero so i have to write at zero here the same is true here for the register attribute so the compatible string is bright light my adc this is used so the um, so the linux kernel knows which driver it needs for this device here and then let's add some sbi information So the first value I will edit is the maximum SPI frequency and I will set it to 4 kHz. And the second value I will send is SPI bits per word and I will set this to 8. So on some SPI IPs you can adjust how much bits are transferred on one SPI transfer. And I want to transfer 8 bit by one SPI transfer. Okay, so this should be it for our um, device tree overlay. Let's try if we can build it. Yeah, it looks good. And now let's take a look at the driver source file. Okay, so down here in the include files, I will delete this procfs include as I don't need it here. And I will substitute this linux slash i2c.h to linux slash sbi slash sbi.h which I need for my SPI functions. Here we have defined the commands to, um, yeah, to control our ADC. And I will change the description to a simple driver, uh, driver for my simple at mega SPI ADC here. Okay. Then the next thing I have to do is, here we have a struct containing all the ADC information. And here the only information is a pointer to our I2C device. But now we don't have an I2C device any longer, so I will change this to struct SPI device. And behind this pointer we have we can access our SPI device. So here in this driver I'm using the industrial I.O. subsystem to make the ADC value known to user space. And here we have the callback function for um, for reading the raw value of the ADC. This is called whenever I want to get or read the value of the ADC from user space. And down here I'm using the function i2c as embus read byte data. And of course now I have to change this to SPI write 8 read 8. So this function will initiate two SPI transfers. The first one will read out a command and the second one will read something back and, and I want to um, write and read from my um, SPI device which is in, stored in this pointer here and the command I want to write out this command get ADC value so on success we will have the return value um, here if we have a negative value an error occurred okay so down here we are just setting up the um, industrial I.O. channel and here we have the operations. Okay, now here we have the prototypes for the probe and remove function and we have to change them a little bit. So now the only argument which is passed is a pointer to our SPI device and same thing is true down here. Here the device tables or yeah, the device IDs just say the, stay the same. Here we have our compatible string, so this driver should be compatible with Brightlight My ADC. And here we have the device IDs, and I have to change this to SPI device IDs here. And I will call module device table SPI My ADC. So this device ID should be added to the SPI device table <coughs> excuse me okay and here we have a struct from the type i2c driver and i will change this to spi driver but the rest stays the same so we have here a pointer to our probe and remove function to our id table and here we have some additional driver information okay so now let's implement or change the probe function 
So once again, now we have only one argument from the type pointer to struct SBI device. And I will need a new variable here I will call buffer and this is an array of two bytes here. Okay, so here we are checking the i square c address, but SBI don't have such addresses, so I will delete these five lines here. Now we are setting up our industrial I.O. device. The only thing I have to change here is change this field here where we are setting up the name. Before we were using the name from the ID table, but now I will just hard code the name to my ADC here. Okay. And now before we are accessing the SBI bus, we have to set up the bus because we have done some changes in the device tree overlay file. And to set up the bus, what I will do is I will call the function SBI setup and it just needs a pointer to our client. Because here in the probe function inside this client, all the informations we have set up in the test overlay are already stored. And in case this returns something smaller than zero, an error occurred. So let me copy these three lines here. And let's write error to failed to set up the SPI bus. And I will return the error code from SPI setup here. Okay, so now after the SPI bus is set up, we can now access it and set the ADC to power up mode. Therefore, I will initialize my buffer here. So the first thing is command set state. And the second thing I want to write out is a one. And to write this out, I will use the function SPI write. It needs a pointer to our um, SPI device, then a pointer to the data it should write out and the size of the data it should write out, which is two in this case. And in case this returns a negative value, an error occurred. Okay, and here, this is something I haven't shown in my last video, so I will delete it, but I will explain to you what I'm doing here. Here in the probe function, we are setting the device to power up mode. And it would be cool if we could set the device to power down mode when we are removing or when we are in the remove callback. And to do this, we have to take our um, industrial I.O. Um, device data and store it in our client struct. And we can do this with the function set or SPI set driver data. So I want to store this to in my client. And I want to store the industrial IO device struct here as my client data. And now when I go down to the remove function, so let me first add my um, buffer here, my two byte array here, I can fetch my data with SBI get driver data, then I will have my industrial IO device data and I can fetch my ADC data from it. And then I can, I can just, <clears throat> I have um, the necessary information to shut this down or to set this to power down mode. And I can do this with um, SPI write once again. I want to write to ADC client. I want to write up my buffer and buffer is two bytes in size. And now I'm setting the device to power down mode. So that's it. And down here, of course, this should be now an SP, as a module SPI driver where we are creating the init and exit function automatically for our driver. And up here I have to change the um, arguments to SBI device struct pointer here too. Okay, so that should be it. So let's try to build this module here. So we call make. Okay, 
Okay, this looks good. So now let me apply our device tree overlay. Or before I do this, let's check our device files and let's search for SPI. So you can see we have two SPI devices here. So this is SPI 0, chip select 0, and this is SPI 0, chip select 1. And now if I'm applying my device tree overlay, and if I look in the device files once again, now we only have device SPI dev 0 0.1 here again, because we have disabled this one here. Okay, so the next step is I will load the industrial IO um, kernels module to use industrial IO. And then I will insert our DTSPI KO kernel module. Okay, you can see the LED is on now. And if I look into um, this bus IO, IO devices, we have a device here. And this is the um, voltage, the raw voltage, which is coming into the device. So let me watch to um, watch th this. Okay, so this is the current value. Let me take my screwdriver and adjust it. Okay, now you can see the value is changing. Okay, and if I remove um, my SPI device, my kernel module for my SPI device, um, Okay, normally the LED should turn off, but I have had a typo here. Yeah, here I want to write a zero, not a one. And when doing this, we should be able to set the device to power down mode again. So let me quickly try it. And now if I remove the module again, the LED is now turned off. Okay, cool. So that's how to implement a simple device tree driver for an SPI device. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.